every day. It's a getting closer, going faster than a roller coaster. Love like yours will surely come my way. Hey, hey, hey. Seems a little longer. Every way, love's a little stronger. Come what may, do you ever long for true love from me? Every day, it's a getting closer, going faster than a roller coaster. Love like yours will surely come my way. Hey, hey, hey. Love like yours will surely come my way. The 2010 film Boy and the 1986 classic Stand By Me are two films that have a lot in common. Just looking at the main characters, these films take on the perspective of boys in their childhood, and the films are about their adventures, dreams, and how they are able to mature by the end of it. However, these films are told in completely different styles, by completely different directors, in completely different places, and during completely different time periods. The cultural context behind these two films are entirely different, yet they cover similar themes and subject matter. The differences lie in how the stories are told. First off, the distinctions between these films begin in their production stages. Adapted from the Stephen King novella The Body, Stand By Me became one of the most popular films of the 1980s. Directed by former All in the Family actor and director of such films such as This Is Final Tap and The Sure Thing, Rob Reiner, this film was set up from the beginning to have major success in the Hollywood box office. Although lacking a major star to headline in the production, the film became a big box office hit and has since become an American classic. From an American viewpoint, it is difficult to see the impact that Boy had in New Zealand. What premiered at Sundance Film Festival as an independent, low-budget foreign film in 2010 became the highest gross in New Zealand film in the local box office. Produced by the New Zealand Film Commission, Taika Waititi, the director, aimed to capture his experiences as a Maori boy growing up in New Zealand during the 80s. With a small budget, Waititi shot the film in his hometown, using relatively inexperienced child actors. This allowed him to capture a funny but strikingly realistic portrayal of New Zealand childhood that is distinct from many other films. Boy, the titular character, swears, takes care of six other kids, has a pet goat, a dead mother, loves to dance like Michael Jackson, has been left by his father, only for him to come back and search for a large sum of stolen money. Nostalgia is a major element of both of these films, and it's apparent in how the films are structured. Stand By Me is a movie that presents childhood in the 50s, while the narrator recounts it in his novel 30 years later. Likewise, the time frame is shifted 30 years for Boy, whose story is set in the 80s, told in the 2010s. The important idea I am trying to demonstrate is that these films are the directors and writers reminiscing on a time when they were young and naive, and they made stupid jokes and did stupid things just because they wanted to. In Stand By Me's case, the group decides to look for a dead body, thinking it would be really cool and that they could get on TV. With barely any preparation or plan, they set off on an adventure, one final hurrah before they would have to inevitably go to junior high and be separated by classes. All the while, they tell silly stories, talk about their favorite foods, and make fun of each other. We talked into the night. The kind of talk that seemed important until you discover girls. All right, all right. Mickey's a mouse, Donald's a duck, Pluto's a dog. What's goofy? If I can only have one food for the rest of my life, that's easy. Pass. Cherry flavor pass. No question about it. The nostalgia is carried through with the music choices of the director, which are all contemporary of the time period that is being portrayed. As an author looking back at his childhood and his friends, he might have focused on all the dangerous, insane, and stupid situations they got themselves in. But instead, Gordy focuses on the bonds he had with Chris, Teddy, and Vern, who have all gone their separate ways but are forever linked through the experiences they shared as kids. It's tough to argue against Stand By Me's demonstration of American culture in the 1950s, 
because for the most part, the film has gone on to define the symbols that Americans associate with themselves. This film has had a great societal impact in what Hollywood now defines as American cinema, and themes and motifs present in this film are a culmination of the ideas present in other coming-of-age American films from the 80s and 90s, such as E.T., The Sandlot, and The Breakfast Club. The straightforward plot with the narration captures the universal fear that kids had when they knew it was almost time to grow up. To many Americans, these films are how they remember their childhood, and it is a simple adventure to find a dead body that encapsulates these emotions. From an American viewpoint, Boy might not have come across as an accurate depiction of a Maori childhood in New Zealand. Instead, it might seem like Waititi's interpretation of his childhood has been imbued with many similar aspects to that of America. As a contrast with most of the stereotypes of indigenous filmmaking in New Zealand, which are defined by a culture that is more spiritual but ravaged by gangs and violence, the nostalgia presented in Boy is not at all isolated from that of America. Not only does the film reference Michael Jackson, E.T., The Incredible Hulk, and other American pop culture iconography of the 80s, it, it turns these preconceived notions on their heads, combining international elements with New Zealand culture. This is most clearly represented in the closing musical number, which is in an homage to Michael Jackson's thriller, the Poe'i and the Haka, which are synonymous with Maori culture. It was Waititi's aim to distance himself from the stigma of New Zealand filmmaking, which is darker and more spiritual in tone, and produce a film imbued with humor that although it tackles a serious subject about the relationship between a boy and his estranged father, doesn't forget that it is told through the eyes of a young child. With an experimental director and a very small budget, Boy is able to tackle its themes of maturing past your blind idealizations effectively by its unique indie style and story. Boy, like many films of the mumblecore genre, focuses on dialogue and the mundane. Despite the visit of Alamine, the boy's father, instigating the conflict of the film, there is not much emphasis placed on the plot. Instead, most of the film is spent with Boy and his younger brother, Rocky, as they hang out with their father, coming to the re realization that he isn't the brave, cool gangster Boy imagined he would be. My dad's not here right now. He's a busy man. He's a master carver, deep sea treasure diver, the captain of the rugby team, and he holds the record for punching out the most people with one hand. When he comes home, he's taking me to see Michael Jackson live. The end. At the beginning of the film, Boy describes the mental image of his father with praise and admiration, with the shots presented in a cartoony, exaggerated fashion. Later on, in another fantasy sequence, he imagines his father as his idol, Michael Jackson, his innocence blinding him of the true greedy intentions of his father. Rocky also has his own sequences of imagination, this time told through flipbook drawings, showing the amazing powers he believes he was born with, the powers he blames for his mother's death. Not only is this a combination of comic book fantasy and spiritual beliefs, but it is another way Taika Waititi presents the mind of a child. The sequences where Boy and Rocky demonstrate their imagination are in sharp juxtaposition to the wide, revealing shots used to capture the reality of life and the beauty of the New Zealand landscape. With awkward dialogue and visual comedy, the depiction of Alamine in real life is shown as being pathetic, goofy, and childlike, much opposed to the image Boy had in his head. While being more experimental than Stand By Me in his presentation, Boy never forgets to tackle these universal themes of growing up. It's just hidden beneath some New Zealand quirkiness. Stand By Me and Boy had massive cultural impacts in their countries of origins because of how they captured the truth of childhood nostalgia. While these films are told as stories, they capture what it really felt like to be a kid for many Americans and New Zealanders respectively, and this universal expression of their culture is what allowed their universal themes to stay prevalent for years to come. Hey you guys, I bet you anything that if we find them we'll get our pictures in the paper. Yeah, yeah we can even be on TV! Sure! We'll be heroes!